not be allowed to own this car. <laughs> Holy crap. What's up, Life Right Nation? What's going on, Life Right Nation? Oh, oh Jesus, oh. she's going crazy. <laughs> so we are we are at our deadline, as in like our deadline has passed at this point. Like we should have been done so much sooner than this. But since we have essentially reached that deadline, hey, we, come here. Hey. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. She's since, all rambunctious right since now. Since we've essentially reached that deadline, today is Sunday, and we are lucky enough that Josh over at CBM Motorsports is willing to come in on his day off to help us get the Ultra 4 car tuned because we, we have to be on the, the, the lake bed in like a day. Yeah, basically. we have to load up tomorrow and <laughs> yeah. The, just... the week or two weeks of like, oh, we'll be done and we'll be able to pre-run it and shake it down and figure out, you know, if there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, that's gone. There's, none of that's happening Blue anymore. Right yeah, we're, we've gone way past that. Oh, so, look at my hoodie. <laughs> look at that. Anyways, today we are officially dino tuning Child's Play, the bummer. Got so much weight on my shoulders. Alright you guys, so this is the man, the myth, the legend. This is Josh. Where? <laughs> so he is Jelly, come here. Don't be mean, Jelly. So he is the guy that will be tuning our Ultra 4 car, and he is literally the most winningest of Ultra 4 tuners, I think, in the, the industry. Oh, uh, I don't know about winningest, but we do pretty good. He's pretty He right. tunes everybody. <laughs> he, he can't say everybody. He tunes. He tunes almost everybody's rigs. So it's obviously the people we're gonna bring our car to is CBM. They built the motor and now we're coming back to them to actually get it tuned. And you're gonna make sure that it makes good power. Sure. <laughs> but reliable it's, power. it's reliable. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll we'll tune it correctly. The engine's built on a proven platform that I've built multiple times before and it's worked. So we're gonna let it keep working. Ours is gonna work. And if you want to see the behind the scenes stuff of him tuning, he actually you has started. You do a channel, don't you? Yeah, we started just a, a channel where I'm grabbing screen records and actually showing the tunes. I keep a camera on the dyno. We're actually working on getting more cameras in the dyno so we can do a better. What's the YouTube channel called? Uh, proper tuning. Proper, proper tuning. tuning. So if you want to actually see some of his stuff brought in action as far as tuning goes, especially with rigs like this, you can head over to their YouTube channel and see it for yourself. It's pretty cool, but ours is going to be cooler. <laughs> So this engine is based off of an LS3, which is a 6.2 liter, right? Yep. And But now it is a almost seven liter? 427, yeah. So 427, seven liter. Well, here's what I'm getting at, is that this, call, this engine going through that transmission, going through the transfer case, going through these big, heavy tires and wheels is something out of the ordinary because in a normal car, you have what, 12 to 15% powertrain loss, right. drivetrain loss? Right. 12 to 15%, so the engine puts out 500 and you lose 12 to 15 percent through all of that by the time it gets to the ground he just told me that this is up to 40 yeah 35 to 40 usually is what we see 35, 35 to 40 percent loss so, from the crane so if the engine puts out 500 or 600 horsepower we're losing by the time it gets to the ground 40 percent of that right. between 35 and 40 percent right. of that let's just say this we had one yesterday putting 500 to the tire at 90 percent throttle in an ultra four car which is so just expect that as <laughs> right. we go through so, the So I don't want people to be like, wait, why is this only making 400 horsepower? No, 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 it's making 600, like you're literally losing 40%. The in, and he'll know what the engine's putting out based on fuel calculations. Okay, so first things first is we actually need to start 
starting up, get everything warmed up at running temperature, stuff like that, and then we need to go and check all the fluids, make sure everything is where it needs to be. And once we're sure that everything is where it needs to be, then we can actually go back in and start the dyno. Thank Hector. Yeah, thank Hector for coming in and helping. I can't hear you. Gotta well, thank Hector for coming in and helping today too. Oh yeah. Thank you for coming in on your day off, Hector. Don't worry, if you're worried about Shelly, we actually went ahead and put her up for this part of the video because unfortunately they don't make doggy ear protection like they do for us. So we want to make sure her ears are protected during this. One side's 9 to 1, one side's 12 to 1. We're going to drill some shit. Nothing like drilling on a brand new engine. So what are we doing now? We are giving it more base airflow. A stock ECM like this one, you can't just open the throttle blade because you get to a certain point and then the TPS reading, the voltage is too high. It'll think that the throttle's open and then it'll never let the idle air controller work. So we have to give it more base airflow. That's why it fired up and is kind of running and low idling is the IC is wide open. You can hear it screaming. So I have to give it more air, more bypass air so that it won't rely on the IAC. One of the tricks on all of my stuff is I give them almost a little too much air um, and then it'll shut the IAC all the way. So like park or neutral, the IAC will be shut all the way and it'll kind of idle just a 50 RPM or so high, and it'll use timing to pull it down. Then the second you put it in the gear, it can add that timing back and you have too much air. So then there's so no dip. It die and it doesn't, whoa, you don't get, you don't get that. Right. Or like you go from drive to reverse real quick, you don't stall right. it or right. like stumble. And then there's a lot of tricks when you have the IAC fully operational that you can do for idle return. Um, so that when you lift, because you know, the biggest thing with these is your full hydro right yeah so full hydro needs rpm you need fluid flow if the fluid dips you have no steering right so rpm dips you have no steering so mine it'll return to idle in like a stage like you'll lift it'll come down to 1500 1600 it'll sit there for about a second and a half and then it'll come all the way down but a 1500 or 1600 with a converter that's 2000 plus you never feel it So it's a little fat still, but it's right almost at 400 of the tire. So we're really close. And how much torque? Well, so here's converter flash right here. Okay. There's where the converter's flashing, and 
converter that's doing its job, the torque's always gonna multiply torque. That's what it's supposed to do. Right. So that's why the torque always looks high. The realistic torque, you know, without the converter is gonna be a little lower. You're probably gonna see it more right there somewhere. And, and that's actually another thing, right? You you don't run lockup on race cars. Correct. Yeah, we don't lock up the torque converter on the race cars because you get too much drivetrain shock load. So that's another reason we don't run gear drives for time set or any of that. You want something that has some kind of forgiveness. And is everything reacting properly? Everything yeah, feels good? It's great. It I sounds just, fantastic. I need to just keep cleaning up the fuel some. You know, the, the tune was close while the get go just because we that tune done. this engine. Because you're the one who gave us the base turn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm not hearing any sputtering, misfiring. No, it is sounds. Oh, it sounds so no, smooth. It's close. And that's that was second gear high range right there. Yeah. And also keep in mind we're actually tuning this on 91 yes. crap California fuel, minimal timing. I mean, perfect timing. Not like we're not like going too far back with timing, but this is so we can if we wanted to take it to Mexico and gamble with their fuel down there, this thing will run. Right. Yeah. You know, we'll build pump gas engines that are true pump gas. You can run them on crap. I mean, it, not crap, you know, like 85. I wouldn't suggest that. <laughs> <laughs> I would try and get at least 91, but you know, we're beating on this thing in 91 and that was the whole design of this engine. The first time we did this engine, man, on 91, it made like 650 horse and I was hoping for six and a quarter, so. So we're not running this on E85, we're not running this on race gas on 110, 100. I wanna put 100 low lead aviation fuel in it just because it smells good. But <laughs> and, but other than that, it well, doesn't have need other it. benefits. You well, know, yeah, you're, not, yeah. It's not an octane benefit, it's a vapor lock benefit, you know, because. From the heat, from the fuel. Well, your boiling point lowers as you go up. Pressure goes down, you know, so you go up in altitude, pressure goes down, boiling point goes lower as well, but. Right. So same thing in here is we want a high boiling point with fuel because everything gets soaked. I mean, heat soaked. Yeah. Everything so that's the one cool thing about Avgas 100 low lead is the, the boiling, boiling point. point is super high. Right. So your vapor lock chance is way lower than 91. And that's what we've been running in it usually is we usually run a yeah. mixture of Avgas and then regular fuel. Yeah. yeah. So we don't have to get it, but like if I want to take this on trails, go take people for ride alongs out, you know, whatever. I don't have to, I can just stop at the pump and fill it with 91 or 93 and, right. and roll. Yep. So that's awesome. No, it sounds, it sounds so good. It sounds so good. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, let me, um, I'll keep cleaning up on the fuel, but it's getting close. I said, I'm gonna do a pull, okay. first, second, third, starting in first. Just like if you guys were on a straight stretch. Yeah. So I'm gonna do that next. Was I just barely rolling a mile an hour or two? Yeah. That was from that to 120 mile an hour. 120 miles an hour, which I don't Sick. think we've ever gotten up to that speed on this. How did it feel? Any vibration? No, that's oh, that's sorry. loaded. That's not unloaded. So that's... It moves. That was... It moves. <laughs>
that sounds good. I should not be allowed to own this car. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh man. The eight to, it's the eight to one headers and that engine and it just sings. It just, oh my God. So as is, you want, you want some math? Want some math? Man. As is, we are at 78% duty cycle on a 50. Okay. Okay, so math. Let's do math. Let's do math. Math is fun. Math. 50 pound injector times 0.78. We're using 40 pounds basically is what we're using per hole. Times eight, times brace specific, which is 0.5, so times two. So NA motor is brake specific on its 0.5. So that puts it about 625, which is right about, well, it's stock intake. That's the other thing. Stock intake, stock throttle body. We are making vacuum wide open, which means we don't have enough air. So barometric here today is 98, 99. We're at like 95, 94, 95 kph. Oh, so it's choking itself out. Uh -huh. Like it doesn't have the amount of airflow through the throttle body manifold. So we need a 102. Here's the funny thing is, even the fast 102s will choke them out. That is, that's crazy though, if you think of like just drivetrain loss. Here, remember we said 35 to 40%, right? Loss? Yeah. All right, so let's take 625 okay. times 0.65, 35% loss. It's almost exactly 35% loss puts us right about what we're making. So yeah, all the numbers, all the numbers check out. I can't believe that I I can't believe that's Did mine. That, that's ours, I mean. <laughs> And it runs and it stays started. It just actually started without me pushing the throttle. Hold on. No, no throttle. It's never done that before. <laughs> All right, you guys, so we are officially, officially, well, we're 99% ready <laughs> to go out to Johnson Valley and actually race at King of the Hammers. There's one more thing, and that's obviously well, the body panels. Well, there, we also have to get this out to King of the Hammers, out yes. to Johnson Valley, then come back and pick up an RV and then get that out to Johnson Valley. Yeah. And then, <sighs> it's a nightmare. You're still, there's still so much. So much. But, the car is running and it's basically ready mechanically it is it is good to freaking go guys as always Kip, where are you going where are you, don't leave me as always thank you for watching please don't forget to like subscribe and share it maybe find all your life right nation merch at lifebrightstudios.com all your life right nation decals at pixeldecals.com thank you josh so much josh the man the legend the what is the, the guy Josh. <laughs> guys, we will see you next time. Bye. Later, guys. Guess what, Chili Down? Bye. She's bored. Look at her.
been pent up with it. I don't know what her... She's like, Mom, you locked me in the truck while you guys were tuning. <laughs> oh, now you go after the other... What happens if you get the other one? Then what? Are we done? Yeah, she wins. That's it. <laughs>